Right now, Earth is moving. Even though you cannot feel it, Earth is always moving in space in two ways. The first way the Earth moves is called rotation. Rotation is the movement of Earth around its axis. This controls the cycle of daytime and nighttime. The Earth takes 24 hours to turn or rotate once on its axis. The Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction from daytime to nighttime and back to daytime again. Counterclockwise means to move in the opposite direction from the hands on a clock. During rotation, the part of Earth that is facing the sun changes. When it is daytime where you are, that means the part of the Earth on which you are standing is facing the sun. Sunlight hits our planet and moves across it from east to west. This is why we see the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Sunset eventually occurs when certain parts of Earth turn or rotate away from the sun and nighttime begins. This cycle continues over and over again. The second way the Earth moves is called revolution. Earth revolves or orbits around the sun in an almost circular path. Therefore, as you live on Earth, you are traveling around the sun too. It takes Earth 365 and a quarter days or one year to complete one revolution or orbit. You might be wondering about the quarter of a day. This quarter explains why we have leap year every four days. Four quarters equals one whole or one whole number, just like four quarters in money equals one dollar. During a leap year, we add on one additional day to the calendar to catch it up to Earth's orbit around the sun. We add one day in February, February 29th, every four years. Earth is tilted as it orbits the sun. Tilt or slant your head to one side. The Earth remains at this same angle and points in the same direction throughout its entire orbit. Now let's find out more about how Earth's tilt causes the seasonal cycle. Earth is divided into hemispheres, which means it is cut in halves. Just like an orange can be cut in half either through the center, from side to side, or from the top to the bottom, Earth can also be divided two different ways. Our planet is divided in half into the northern and southern hemispheres by an imaginary line on its surface called the equator. The equator is the same distance from the North Pole as it is from the South Pole. The United States, where we live, is located in the Northern Hemisphere. Earth can also be divided into two halves called the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. These hemispheres are divided by the Prime Meridian, an imaginary line used to split Earth into Eastern and Western halves. When the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun during Earth's revolution around the sun, it receives more intense light from the sun at a more direct angle. During this time, it is summer in the northern hemisphere. Around June 21st each year, the sun reaches its highest point overhead in the northern hemisphere. This is called the summer solstice and it is referred to as the longest day of the year. That means that there is daylight for a longer period of time on that day than on any other day of the year. People in the Southern Hemisphere are experiencing winter, while people in the Northern Hemisphere are experiencing summer. On June 21st in the Southern Hemisphere, that part of Earth is tilted away from the sun, with the sun at a low angle in the sky. The sunlight is not as strong or as intense, and there is less of it, so that part of Earth receives less light and less energy than the northern hemisphere. June 21st is the winter solstice, 
or shortest day of the year in the southern hemisphere. It is the opposite of the northern hemisphere. North and south are opposites. They are opposite directions. As Earth revolves around the sun, the seasons begin to change depending on which hemisphere is tilted most directly toward the sun. This depends on where Earth is on its revolution or orbit around the sun. One revolution takes one year, and each hemisphere is tilted directly in the sun for a part of the year. Six months after the longest day in the northern hemisphere, the shortest day occurs. The winter solstice in the northern hemisphere is on December 21st. This is, of course, the longest day of the year, or summer solstice, in the southern hemisphere. They are opposites. When Earth is halfway between the two solstices, both hemispheres receive the same amount of sunlight. This means that the hours of daylight and of darkness are the same in each hemisphere. The days that are equal are called equinoxes. The spring equinox occurs at the beginning of spring on March 21st. The autumn equinox occurs at the beginning of autumn on September 21st. The cycle of one complete orbit or revolution of Earth around the sun marks or measures one year. Living things respond to the changes in sunlight and warmth throughout the four seasons of the year. With increased sunlight and warmth during spring and summer, many living things tend to grow well. Animals are born and plants grow. With decreased sunlight during autumn and winter, some plants are ready to be harvested, whereas others die. Some become dormant or stop growing and making new leaves for the winter and wait for the sunlight to return. You will see that most trees do this in the fall and winter. Some animals, to avoid the winter chill, hibernate or migrate. When animals migrate, they move to warmer environments. Not every part of Earth experiences four different seasons. Different areas of Earth have different types of weather. This is partly because of the shape and tilt of our planet. This means that different parts of Earth receive different amounts of sunlight and warmth. The area around the equator receives the greatest amount of direct, intense sunlight, so some of the warmest parts of Earth are located in that part of the planet. The North and South Poles are at opposite ends of our planet, and they receive the least direct sunlight. In fact, although they are so far apart, they have the same kind of weather as each other. It is always cold in the North and South Poles, and both places are usually covered with ice. In the next lesson, you will learn more about the cycle involving the four seasons and how each season brings with it an ever-changing landscape. Which season is your favorite?